provocative, provocative show today. And the title of our show today is called The Mystery, The Mystery of Witchcraft. Y'all will be awake, so they got something for y'all today. <laughs> the Mystery of Witchcraft. First of all, I want to thank <clears throat> all of my supporters, simply the best who have been an awesome sponsor of this show. I, I strongly advise you guys to go and uh, visit them for all of your uh, video needs, audio needs, equipment rental, and so on right there in the Mayport building. Uh, I strongly advise that you go and visit them for all of your uh, recorded memories, whether it's audio or video. I want to thank God for everyone that has supported this show. Minister Kevin L. A. Ewing Spiritual Insight Show, where we go to the, the, the root. We ain't playing with no surface. Ain't no spin around three times and give your neighbor high five up in here. That those things don't work. We we getting the word of God. <clears throat> excuse me, we're getting the word of God. We're, 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 we're making it applicable so we could see the results of God's word. Okay. So with that said, and now let's go into a small prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, your loving kindness, your peace. We thank you, Father God, for the ability to participate among the living. We thank you, Father God, that we're not being aided by some machinery, some human assistance. But Father God, through your grace and mercies, you've seen it fit to allow us to not only participate in this day, but to participate with all of our faculties in order. We thank you for all of the listening audience. We thank you, Father God, for those who have sponsored the show. We pray for those, even in the future, who would listen to this show, that they would be blessed by it. We pray right now that your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding will go forth in spirit and in truth, disabling all form of ignorance, particularly spiritual ignorance that we've been under for years, causing us to be limited and restricted being saved for so many years and not able to progress simply because of the lack of knowledge. But today we're about to dispel all of that nonsense and let your word come forth, breaking all of the boundaries, breaking all of these restrictions, the limitations, and everything that has caused us not to go forward. So Father, let your will be done. Let your peace, let your joy, let everything that you have purposed in this show run its course unhindered in the matchless and in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I am so excited as usual. Uh, you know, I thought about the show this entire week. I said, boy, I can't wait to get here at the studios at <coughs> Dove 103.7 to share with my listening audience. And all of you, I can't remember you by name. You stopped me all through the week. Oh, I listened to the show, man. It was so intriguing. I praise God for you. I thank you. I thank you that you took the time to, to listen <clears throat> and to hear God speak to you through these uh, messages. Well, you know my favorite scripture. My favorite scripture is Proverbs chapter 11, verse 9b. And it says that through knowledge, oh, I love this, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. You all hear that? Through knowledge. Deliverance comes through knowledge. And what is this knowledge, Mr. Yui? The word of God. The things that we haven't been told for years, the stuff that was kept away from us, whether willingly or ignorantly, we didn't know. We followed the same useless pattern year after year, month after month, be 50, 60, 40, 25, 30, 35, and still waiting on the breakthrough, still waiting on the miracle, still waiting on the turnaround, still waiting on the husband, still waiting on that wife, still waiting for the husband to come back and the wife to come back. All that nonsense. No. Deliverance comes through the knowledge of God, the Word of God, and that is what we're getting into. We want to know what does the Word of God says about our situation. We don't want to hear no nursery rhyme. No, we ain't interested in spinning around seven. I tired of that. I came to church to hear the Word of God. I didn't come to church to exercise. That's what the YMCA for. <laughs> so I came here to hear what God got to say. If I want exercise, I will hire a personal trainer. That's what I would do. But I don't need exercise, at least not physical exercise. I need spiritual understanding, spiritual insight to my situation. That's what I'm about. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear, don't tell me how God bless you. And I still broke over here for 60 years. Don't tell me how God turned it around for you and buy you Mercedes Benz and you go to go tell me show you all this foolishness. I don't want to hear that. Tell me what scripture you use, how you use it, how did you dedicate yourself, how did, how did you commit 
amongst all of the other distractions in life. That's what I want to hear. So if it isn't about the word of God, keep stepping, my brother or sister. All right? So, with that said and done. <laughs> with that said and done again, I just want to thank the listening audience, man. I am so happy to have you here today <clears throat> and today being for an awesome show. Being for an awesome show. Today I'm going to take my time and I'm going to teach you. I'm going to take you into the scriptures. And we are going to understand what this witchcraft, this obeah, this voodoo, this sorcery that all the preachers has run from. They ain't going to hear that. When they hear that boy dying or true, don't listen to that boy. Kevin, you know what he's talking about. That's all he's talking about is will be a rig. Now he's wake witch. <laughs> yeah, I've heard it all. I don't care what they say. I ain't got time for them. You know the words say? The Bible says that broad is the way that leads to destruction. Follow them. Keep ignorant. Keep, keep right there going nowhere in life. Let them tell you week after week, Sunday after Sunday, God got a blessing around the corner for you. <clears throat> well, I know where this corner is because <laughs> it looks like this corner can't find its way to you. But they blessed. <laughs> No, man. No. No, 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 no. No. Uh-uh. We are about to expose. We are about to unveil the revelatory insight, again, of the things that has been kept from us, man. These things have been kept. It wasn't like they weren't there in the scriptures. They were right there. But we choose not to uh, read. We choose or to just, just pick out particular scriptures that only talk about money and and better life, and never achieving it, never ever participating in it. We talk about it. We, we have all of the educated uh, rhymes and riddles, and, and, and you know, I, I, I don't know about you, man, but I, I am just so, well, I used to be fed up because I don't, I don't follow that nonsense no more. <clears throat> I decided to take the Word of God and read it for myself, listen to it for myself, practice it, and Kevin Ewing has seen tremendous, and anyone who knows me could tell you, they will tell you, who know me personally, they know my story. They know the oppression spiritually and physically I was under. And the word of the living God through knowledge, when I exposed myself and made practical the simple word of God, when I begin to commit to fasting, when I begin to commit to praying, when I commit to, to really seeking God, with the intention that I am, I am giving you back your word, Mr. God. You said that your word cannot return unto you void. You said that you've placed your name above your word. You said that you're watching over your word to perform it. Your word declares in Proverbs 30 and 5, it says that every word of God is pure and that you, O Lord, are a shield unto those that see. That is what I am coming to you with. Not no rhymes, they tell me. Those rhymes, I, that, that's, what, that's, what, that's what kindergarten is for, okay? Some churches mix up. You, you got me, one minute I in the gym, the next minute I in kindergarten. No, give me the word, how simple that is. That's what you were, were trained to do. Give me what God say. That's all I want to hear. And now encourage me and assist me in making it practical and stop living a double life. Tell me how to stay away uh, from those things and commit to the word of God, all right? So today... Before I get any further with my teaching, I got to promote my sister. Boy, I, I don't tell you, I say, Zeta, every time I have a show, I'm going to promote this book. Please, for those of you who are, that's another thing, you can watch me right now on Facebook. That's what technology is all about. Facebook, you can watch me right now live. If you want to go on Facebook right now, I advise you, you go on, if you're in the car right now, pull out your little cell phone, your iPhone, your Mickey Mouse phone, whatever type of phone you got, your bubbler, as long as you can get online. Go to Facebook and type in Kevin L. A. Ewing. You're going to see me live. If you don't feel like going to that one, then you can go to Words of Wisdom by Minister Kevin L. A. Ewing. Now, that's a private group, so you've got to ask, uh, answer three questions, which are very simple, and then we will add you to the group. Then I have my Kevin L. A. Ewing Ministries Facebook page. All right, so that's Kevin L. A. Ewing Ministries. Then we have uh, Kevin L. A. Ewing Prayer page. All right, so that's like four pages I have on Facebook, and I'm, rec- I'm, I'm actually broadcasting on all four of those social media Facebook pages right now, simultaneously at the same time, with this super bad camera I got here. I'm going to just do all the work for me while I do my teaching part of it. So you can see me right now. Right now, you can see me live in the studios of Dove 103.7. I'm coming to you live via the radio, and I'm also live 
via social media. Now, all of you right now, I can see all of you now on social media, please state which country or wherever you're from, say where you're from so everybody will see you online and we are we're all over the world. All over the world, people broadcast or called chime into this Facebook page. That's why I love technology, man. I love it. I love it. Ain't no more. Keep me cooped up in church no more. Only four members in there. No. We, we, we gone global. <laughs> and I thank God for the use of technology. So my friend Zeta, Zeta Grant, has written this profound book called Be Free from Spirit Spouses, Marine Spirits by Zeta Grant. Now, if you're watching me on Facebook, you'll see me holding this to my camera. And you can actually see the book itself. I'm trying to get it angle here. Be Free from Spirit Spouses by my wonderful friend, Zita. She's a lady of the soil. Pack. I mean, overwhelmingly saturated with spiritual wisdom. And I mean, she's really laid it out in this book, man. I'm not going to give you any excerpts because I want you to purchase the book. Go on Amazon.com. You can... Uh, I get a copy of it, and that's Be Free from Spirit Spouses by Zeta Grant. Also, you can go to my webpage. Take that. Go to my webpage, Kevin L A U A Ministries.com, and you can scroll all the way down, look for recommended books, click on that, and we'll take you straight to the link to Zeta's uh, where you can actually purchase a copy of this. You can get the actual ebook or you can get the Amazon copy, the hardback copy. Speaking of my webpage, I also have a blog site, and that's kevinlaewing.blogspot.com. You don't have to remember that, because once you go to the webpage, which is kevinlaewingministries.com, then I have a link that takes you straight to my blog site, where I have over 600 articles. 600 articles, over 146 of those articles are dedicated to uh, dreams, all right? I deal with fasting, spiritual warfare, witchcraft, all this other stuff that, like I say, churches don't speak about. Not only do I speak about them, but I speak about them scripturally. And anyone who knows about my teaching, everything I reference to the Bible, I don't want to hear it if it ain't coming from the Bible. Don't tell me what mama say. Mama them got us in trouble right now, but <laughs> nevertheless. Then I have my YouTube channel. Again, you can access all of these from my webpage, which is KevinLAUingMinistries.com, and once you scroll down, how you're going to know you're at my page, you're going to see a beautiful photo of my wife and myself. Speaking of my wife, whom I love dearly, I know she's listening right now. Listen, listen, this woman, I told you all last week, and I can tell you all again, this here, this this, this is the, 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 the wind beneath my wing. She's the, the great supporter. I love her dearly. She is, uh, I tell you, she of work. I do all the teaching, I do all of that stuff, but she's the one that makes sure everything is put together. She's the one that keeps me together, to be honest with you, because without her, I would be entirely disorganized. So I want to tell my sweetie pie, Deidre Ewing, how much I love her. <laughs> and I appreciate her. And I know my cuties are listening to me right All right, so anyway, no no more delays. Let's get into this. The mysteries of witchcraft. Boy, we got something on our hand today. We got something on our hand today. Listen, we live in a society, whether people want to believe it or not, which is saturated with sorcery, saturated with obey, saturated with voodoo. Now, they would try to hide and, and, and say, don't that stuff ain't no true, and don't believe in that, and the power of God is greater, and that is true. That is true. The power of God is greater. But the power of God being greater does not discount the fact that a lot of people are involved in these things that are not only bringing a curse upon themselves and by extension their family, but they're also cursing the land. And that's why you have so much stagnation and limitation and the land can't go forward. That's why the land have all the great infrastructure, all the container ports, all the big shipyards, all of the uh, pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing places and the oil storage facilities and the great infrastructure, reliable electricity and running water here in Grand Bahama, but we are a still How could that be? When you have uh, countries or even islands which have much less than what we have but prospering. No, man, there's a spiritual order behind that. So that's what we want to uh, discover today. We want to discover... What is witchcraft? Because when you hear the word witchcraft, you think about somebody planting something in your yard or 
somebody down by the graveyard get dust thrown all over your face and doing foolishness. No, 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 dispel that. No, 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 no. They, they are parts of it, but that's not witchcraft within itself. First of all, witchcraft is a system, and witchcraft is a spiritual system. And that system is operated by practitioners known as warlocks, witches, and wizards. Okay? The warlocks would be the male part, and the witches would be that of females. And you have a lot of witches and warlocks here in Myanmar, many of them. They may not look so on the outside. They don't wear a shirt walking around saying, hey, hey, I'm Mr. Witch, or oh, Miss Witch over here, I'm Mr. Warlock. No, 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 no. You're not going to see that. But when we get into the scriptures today and begin to extract the revelation and true discernment uh, aided with the scriptures, you're going to be able to figure them out. You're going to be able to figure out many things that they subscribe to that is totally demonic. Totally. I remember a friend of mine was telling me that they were at a church, Radiant Grand Bahama. And it's not a well-known church, but in this church, when you get there, you know, saturated with females, you have to... Uh, take your shoes off and dip it in this little basin pan of water and you must wear some article of red. Well, what's that all about? And, and the minute I was told about it, I say, man, whoever, whatever this place is that they're calling church is nothing but a synagogue of devils. And of course, we're going to explain further with that. But the reality is we live in a world that we coexist with spirits. Spirits as in the spirits from the kingdom of darkness, and spirits from the kingdom of light. Now, in order to understand witchcraft in its entirety, you have to get a full grasp of it. So when you hear the word now, and based on how we're going to bring it forth today in terms of the scriptures, you not only will have a better understanding, but now you'll be able to understand a lot of the things that are going on around you that's causing certain things to happen as a result of these spiritual oppressive systems. Now, in uh, Genesis, and I use the scripture all the time, in Genesis, and I want us to turn there right now, let's turn to Genesis uh, chapter 1, and we're going to read verse 26, and we're going to read verse 28. So let me just pull it up here on my little phone here, <clears throat> which is much more convenient for me. So that's Genesis chapter 1, and let's look at verse 26 first. And verse 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them. Now, who's this them? He's talking about man, but man would be generic of man and woman. Now, let's, let's circle that phrase because this is key in this particular scripture, as well as when we go into verse 28. So let's start it again in verse 26 of Genesis 1. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them, circle that, let them let them have dominion. Let them have rule. Let them have uh, control and authority over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. All, not parts of the earth. So man have full dominion, full control, full authority and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now let's go to verse 28. <clears throat> And it says, and God bless them. Who's the them again? The man and the mankind, which in this case would be representative or symbolic of Adam and Eve. It says, and God bless them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So they couldn't do these things prior to this blessing, which is spiritual. The blessing which is spiritual has now enabled Adam and Eve physically to be fruitful, to multiply, and to replenish. All right? And he says, and to subdue it, and watch, he's going to repeat himself again, and to have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moved upon the what? The earth. So who did God give dominion to in the earth? Who did he give the authority to in the earth? Well, he gave the authority to man, just like we read. Mankind. So, you would agree with me based on those two scriptures alone. Those two scriptures alone. Even though we coexist with spirits, God never, as it relates to this earth, gave spirits dominion. So we are the ones who run the show here. We are the ones 
who will determine or give access or permission to any spirit. Watch this now. I want you to hear me clearly. Even the spirit of God to operate on this planet. Now, I know that's a challenging one, but I want you to go by the scripture. Don't tell me how you feel. Don't, don't tell me who we think he is. No, no, no. This ain't no time to get mad. This ain't no time to be argumentative. Let's go according to the scriptures. Okay? Because once we go according to the scriptures, then we can't go wrong. You know why? Because we're following the rules. Okay? We're following the principles. We're following the laws of God. All right? Now, let's go to Psalms chapter 8. And we're going to read from verse 4 to verse 6. Psalms chapter 8, we're going to read from verse 4 to verse 6. And listen to what it says here in verse 4. It says here in verse 4 of Psalms chapter 8, it says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Verse 5 says of Psalms 8, For thou, who is thou, which is God, for thou hast made him, which is mankind, human beings, a little lower than the angels, and has crowned him, which is mankind, with glory and with honor. So there's a spiritual endowment upon us which automatically exudes or displays glory and honor. So that's something we don't have to work for. God has given that to us. But listen to verse 6. Verse 6 of Psalms 8 says, Thou, which is God again, madest him. Who is this him? Which is mankind. Now, so far, you ain't get nothing but no spirits, right? He ain't give spirits no glory give spirit no honor. He's talking about the humanity. Humanity are spirits that are housed in a fleshly body. That's us. So verse 6 of Psalms chapter 8 says, Thou madest him, or God created man to have what? Dominion, watch this word again, over the works of his hands. Thou which is God, has put not some things I'm reading here, I'm looking at all things under his feet. Not God's feet, but man's feet. So God says, everything I've created with my hand, including the devil, including evil spirits, including witchcraft, including voodoo, including all of that, he says, I have given man who resides on this earth as in their true nature spirits, housed in a physical body, I have given them dominion. I have given them authority. I have given them rulership over the earth. Now, Kevin, where are you going with this, man? I, I, I feel in you, but I see where you headed with this. Well, I'm trying to lay this thing out clear for you because I'm trying to show you who run the show here. So, if, if, if my initial statement is true, in that we coexist with spirits, then how is it that spirits have or can possess a person? How is it then a, a Holy Spirit can lead you or, 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 or come upon you and cause you to do things that you couldn't do before? How is it that a person could, could, could change your destiny via an evil spirit? How, how could this happen? Well, that's a good question. Because if God has given us dominion, then we which are the dominion operators and rulers, must now give permission to spirits or to invite them here to the earth in terms of assisting us or doing our bidding or whatever the case may be. Now, you may say, Kevin, I think you're going to get ahead of yourself. You know, I'm not. Because again, it's going to show you the system of witchcraft. Witchcraft is a spiritual system and its main purpose is to oppress anything that has to do with progression, particularly that of mankind. But it's not limited to man. It's limit, it can be in an environment. It can be in a family. It can be in a community. It can be in a country. Wherever there's oppression, wherever there's stagnation, wherever there's uh, limitation, wherever you find uh, people finding it difficult to do the things that they were created to do, such as have children, get married, live a happy, healthy life, and say somehow that's being stagnated, that's being limited, particularly when you see as a common pattern or practice in a group, in a church, 
in a workplace, in a family, in a community, in a state, in a country, then you are dealing with invisible powers known as the system of witchcraft. But it cannot just happen. Someone had to initiate it. Someone had to put their hand to some evil and invite the spirit. All right? Now, let's make some sense out of this. Let's go now to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus chapter 7. All right? Let's go to Exodus chapter 7. And we're going to read verse 8 to verse 13. All right? Exodus chapter 7. And we're going to read from verse 8. Now listen to what it says here. In verse 8 of Exodus chapter 7. Now just to give some background here. This is where God now had sent Moses to Pharaoh along with his brother Aaron. To tell uh, Pharaoh to let the people of God go. So in verse 8. Of Exodus 7 it says and the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron saying when Pharaoh shall speak unto you saying show a miracle then thou shalt say unto Aaron take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh and it shall become a serpent so God is telling Moses well in advance Pharaoh is going to test you as in to say whose power you operating under because, of course, as you would know, Egypt during that time, and, and even now, are uh, operating under demonic uh, powers, under idol gods. So God said to him, now when he asks you, Moses, to show a sign to see which god you're dealing with, then you tell Aaron, which is your brother, who is also the high priest, you tell him to take the staff that he has, toss it to the ground, and I, God, through my power, will turn that staff that rod into a snake. All right? Verse 10 says, And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his serpents, and it became a serpent. Now, that would have been very interesting to see. Can, can you imagine that? I mean, I would be convinced that this, this got to be well, a man of God, for him to actually make a, a piece of stick or water, whatever, turn into an actual creature, in this case a serpent. But watch this. Listen to verse 11 of Exodus chapter 7. All right? Now, because Moses and Pharaoh obeyed the voice of God, that now forged a spiritual covenant. As a result of it, God the Spirit, who gave dominion to mankind, Moses and Aaron and everybody else, he is now able to facilitate this miracle. So when they invited, when they obeyed God, they invited the Spirit of God to now uh, operate on their behalf or to reveal to Pharaoh, okay, this is what we're dealing with here. But listen to verse 11 of Exodus 7. Then Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, that's it? This this, this, this the best you could do? You, 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 you turn this rod into a snake? Man, look here. Call my Obia people here because these fellas ain't serious. <laughs> Listen to verse 11 of Exodus 7. Then Pharaoh also called, now listen to these terms now, the wise men and the sorcerers and the magicians of Egypt. You only understand this? So you know who he summons? He summons the witchcraft workers. He summons those who know how to tap into the spiritual realm but from a negative perspective. And to forge agreements with evil spirits to now, listen to this carefully now, duplicate or replicate what God has done. So this is why I'm telling you and I'm going to say it again. If you are in a church and that pastor say he don't believe in witchcraft or don't listen to those things, get up and leave. You know why? Let's put you back in time where this was happening. And you have two sides doing the same thing. How would you decipher who is of God? Because first of all, you don't believe in obey. You don't believe in witchcraft. So this is why you need spiritual education. This is why you need to peel back and look at the revelation in the scriptures and take those principles, take those rules, take the God's policies as it relates to these things. So now you could look with spiritual eyes and decipher who this person who call himself a man or a woman of God 
pulling all these little uh, mag magic stuff. You see through that. The Holy Spirit saying, Kevin, that is not of God. They are doing the same thing Pharaoh did. They are doing the same thing Pharaoh sorcerers did. They are doing the same thing the wise men of Egypt did. So you see why? Don't, don't let, listen to me. Any pastor, any apostle, any bishop say to you, don't listen to Kevin. Witchcraft is not real. It, that's a pastor who is under spiritual blindness. That is an apostle who is under spiritual blindness, and you better get from underneath them. Yeah, no, you can write me some more emails. Send them, buddy. <laughs> anyway, so how would you be able to decipher who is of God at this point? So the scripture says, Then Pharaoh called, also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with, listen carefully, listen carefully, with their enchantment. What is enchantment? And I want you to take note of these words particular words and phrases because I get on these pastors who don't believe in this who tell you witchcraft ain't real or they make uh, foolish statements or witchcraft only work for those who believe in it oh really really now and what scriptures that found again which scriptures that found again no man stop it stop it stop stop keeping the people of God in, in blackness in, in ignorance that's why they ain't going forward. You, you, Mr. Pastor, you got them like that. You, because of what you, what you disagree with or what you dismiss, sorry, in God's word, now everybody in the church got to suffer because of your stupid opinion, because of your ignorant position that you are holding, because of your lack of knowledge. The people of God cannot get ahead because the sorcerers now have the upper hand. Why? Because the sorcerers understands the law. And what is the law as it relates to this? Why the belief? being defeated, Hosea 4 and 6. God says, listen, my people, you are perishing. You are failing. You are being destroyed. Why? Because you lack knowledge. But, 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 but God, pastor say, pastor, pastor say, you, you, now I see who your next God is now. <laughs> no, man. Uh-uh, he says, my people... Uh, 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 being destroyed. This is a law. What is the law of destruction as it relates to the believer? When the believer lacks the necessary knowledge, which is the word of God, which is the rules, which is the principles, which is the policies of God, which we know to be the Bible, it says that destruction, failure, backwardness is the inevitable. It is the fruit of a lack of knowledge. Then the scripture comes back and say to us again, listen to this carefully, Isaiah 5 and 13. He says that my people, still talking about the people of God, are gone into captivity. Now, the captivity he's speaking of here is spiritual, which is the worst captivity you can be in. Because this is the one you can't see. This, even though you're walking about freely, they don't have you lock up in a majesty's prison. They don't have you lock up in some state federal prison. No, you're free, but you can't get ahead in life. Nothing you could see physically holding you back. But the system of oppression, which is witchcraft, that's operating in your life, has you bound. But watch this now. You go to church every Sunday, every Sunday, and they're telling you from the pulpit where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But yet, you got a, a, a master's degree or CPA and, and every other degree, and you are some of your frying chicken, if you can even hold such a chicken job. Now, now, now think of, I want you to think about this, you know, I know, I know the pastors can write me and curse me out, but I don't care. I ain't talking to them no more. Let them stay with me. I'm talking to you who know you've been saved for at least 60 million years and nothing is happening in your life right now. Why? Because nobody is telling you the rules. Nobody is telling you the laws. So you become part and parcel to your own demise by following the traditions of men and neglecting the commandments of God. And what, what does that process produce according to the scriptures? Well, according to Matthew 15, that when we uh, decide to follow the rules of men and neglect the commandments of God, which they call tradition, it says now the word of God is of no more effect in our lives. So this now begins to open up a can of worms to show you why you weren't getting ahead. 
Why? Because all your life you followed, you were just happy carrying past the Bible up to the to be his armor bearer. What armor bearer? What war are you going in? See, all of this nonsense is what we need to dispel. Get this out of the way. Move all of this clutter. What does the scripture say? Because that's what I want to hear. Because so far in our teaching, I have just seen where evil men who are involved in the system of oppression such as sorcery and witchcraft was able to duplicate the miracle that Brother Moses and Brother Aaron did. How do I decipher? What do I have to do now to combat the evil in my life that's stopping me from being where I was supposed to be as a child of the living? Who or what has caused me to be derailed? What has hijacked my destiny that every Sunday I go to church, no one could tell me? Now, I promise I was going to calm down, you know. But like Maury say, that was a lie. <laughs> so listen to this now. These guys were able to duplicate or to imitate this miracle of changing a serpent. Uh, sorry, changing a rod into a serpent. Now, the Bible uses a serious word they call enchantment. And what does this mean? This means now they were able, through demonic spiritual means, to call on their gods, call on their demonic forces. And they now form a covenant or an allegiance, or the Bible call it a league with the spirits. We need y'all to come up with something to show Brother Moses here, not only him, could do these things. And they were able to achieve it. But now I want us to look at verse 22 of uh, the same chapter, Exodus 7. Verse 22 says here, it says, uh, well, before we go there, let's go to verse 21. And the fish that was in the river died. This is when they turned the river into blood, right? And the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt, verse 22. And the magicians, this, 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 the witchcraft people now, of Egypt, did so with what? Their enchantments. So they turn away and they begin to speak in these different languages. They're communicating with the invisible world from a demonic perspective because they now need the invisible world, which is the evil spirits, to now do their bidding. We need you to now turn the rest of the rivers into blood to show Brother Moses, even though he's a man of God, like you say, we who practice witchcraft could do the same thing. So I wonder if, because the Egyptians believe that that's the only reason why it works. Pastors. No, man, we got to stop it. We, 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 we have to stop it. We, we have to stop causing the people to not progress by keeping them ignorant. Let's, let's look at, let's look at, let's go to my, my favorite script. Let's go to Hosea 4. You know, and, and verse 6, because I quote it all the time, but I, only, I always only quote a part of it. But there's a penalty with that, you know. There's a penalty with the scripture for the leaders who are supposed to be teaching God. People, what I'm telling you right now, and many more like it, as far as the scriptures are concerned. Let's look at the penalty, what will happen to the leaders, and watch not only them, but their children when they keep us from the word of God. Hosea 4 and 6 now begins to give us the law of instruction, the, the, the law of destruction. It says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 and 6. He says, Because thou hast rejected knowledge, but he's talking to a specific person here, you know. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Okay, who's this thee? That thou shalt be no more. Priest to me. Who's the priest? The priest is the pastor. The priest is the apostle. The priest is the bishop. The one who God put in charge to teach his people his word. Not to only go with popular teaching such as prosperity and so and see. No. Give them the full stuff. Give them everything so that they would be prepared to come back to counteract anything that's coming against them physically or even especially spiritually. So watch what God say to you pastors, you, 
You who stand in the pulpit every Sunday, every Wednesday, whatever Bible study night, and you preach that same old tired messages over and over and never address these things. God says to you, because you have rejected the knowledge of God, he said, I will also reject you, that thou shall no longer be a priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the laws of God, I will also forget thy children. Mighty God. You all listen to this? You all listen to this? Are you all listening to this? See, I, I, am I making this stuff up? See, we need to look at the law. What does the law say? What is the law saying? He says, when you do not tell my people what I have given you to tell them, Instead, you pick out from the Bible every scripture that relates to sowing, every scripture that relates to being rich and wealthy and all this nonsense. You're not telling them about the spiritual opposition against them. You're not giving them the laws that Kevin Ewing is giving them to now, now when they go into prayer. Father, every evil replica that the enemy is coming at me with, send your fire to this to 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 sever it from the root in it i would have never known that unless brother kevin tell me that because all this time for the past 30 years i've been praying to god to send a financial blessing and nobody told me he'd been sending it all this time but because someone is coming against me in the spiritual realm via sorcery and i was ignorant even though i was going to this church for 25 trillion years nothing happening for me but you don't got to worry, sweetie. You can come free today. But guess what? The one who's been leading you and ain't been telling you the truth, look at the children. Look at, look, look at the scripture. See, I know you can get mad at me, you know. And I don't care. See, I need, you to, I need to make this clear. I don't care if you get mad. I want you to, because when you get mad with me, that means you're getting mad with the scriptures. And I want you to get mad with the scriptures. Look at the script. He says, if you... He said, you will no longer be a priest to me. You will no longer be a pastor to me. You will no longer be whatever title you call yourself because you have kept my people from knowledge. And he says, not only will I reject you, but because you've forgotten my law, I will forget your children. So what God saying, just how you forget my children, I go forget yours. It's as simple as that. And that's why you see some leaders and you look at their children and everything that Bad for the children, going bad. But it ain't the children. It ain't the children. It is a law running its court. It's because daddy who's a preacher, it's because mommy who's a pastor, refused to do what God tell that person to do towards his people. So God says, listen, I want you to read the law of destruction again. Because incorporated in this law, I can deal with you and your seed. We come now, come on, Kevin. Come now. I come. <laughs> I come. So when we read these, don't pick out the pretty part that think only for the people. Oh yeah, y'all, y'all suffering for the lack of knowledge. Yeah, we suffering. We you call you, you, Mr. Pastor, you who doing the Watuzi up on the pulpit, you who doing the cabbage patch, you who doing all that foolishness on that pulpit and accept telling me what God works. So every day I am on this stressful job, packed with devils. I am home frustrated. I can't meet my mortgage. I can't meet the rent. Everything. And I've been saved. I've been so into your ministry. I give to the bus fund. I give to uh, the carnival fund, the Mickey Mouse fund. I give to, 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 to the Billy Goat seed, the, the, the Camelback seed. I give eh? all of that I give. 30 years later, I still rent. 30 years later, I still I can ride to work. 30 years later, I got the same testimony that I had 30 years ago. No progress. Why? Because every sermon was tailored to give the pastor money, give the church money. But nobody was telling you the spiritual forces opposing you. So how could you confront, fight, or even challenge you don't even know about? It can't happen. It'll never happen. So let's swing here now to Deuteronomy 18. And we're going to see where God had major issues with Israel as it relates to sorcery. So Deuteronomy chapter 18, and we're going to read from verse 9 to verse 14. So Deuteronomy chapter 18, let me just pull this up here. 
Deuteronomy 18. I'm going to read from verse 9. And listen to what it says. God now, through Moses, is speaking to the children of Israel. And he's giving them the instructions prior to going into the promised land. The promised land back then was known as Canaan, which is known as Israel today. Canaan at that time, they only, the Canaanites, sorry, only served idol gods. They never served the God of Abraham. They, did, they didn't care. They, they wasn't interested. No God of Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Jacob, none of that. They served Molech. They served Ashtoreth. They served all of these idols and shrines and altars. This is how they operated. So listen to what God said to them prior to them going into the, the land to possess it. Verse 9 of Deuteronomy 18 says, When thou art come into the land which, thy, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, listen carefully, thou shalt not learn to do after, listen what he address it as, or label it as, the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you, men and women of God, Christians, anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Meaning that what the Canaanites did, they would take their young children, babies, fetus, and they would have this big Molech idol with fire burning around it, and it's like a deep pit. And they would take their living babies, that's how sick these people were, and literally throw their babies into the fire as a sacrifice unto their God. The sacrifice here meaning that I'm going to give something that is dear to me in exchange for something greater. So to appease their demonic gods, they would take their living children and toss them into this. this. And I want you all to say this sick. They doing that today. Oh, yeah. It may not be in this method here, but they're making evils. And we can get into that today, too. So he says in verse 10, 10 of Deuteronomy 18, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh a son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that use a divination, which is another witchcraft term, or an observer of times, that's horoscopes and all about the foolishness, or an enchanter, enchanter, remember what the wise men and the sorcerers and the magician did before they begin to replicate the miracles of Moses, they made enchantment. The question is to who? To evil demonic gods. All right, verse 11 says, all charmers or consulting with familiar spirits. Or a wizard or a necromancer. What is a necromancer? Someone that claims to communicate with the dead, which is impossible, according to Scripture. Verse 12 says, For all that do these things are an abomination to God. So God says, there's no excuse. Kevin, listen, when I was young, Grammy, when I was sick and, and, and the doctors couldn't, find nothing to heal me or they couldn't give me no medicine to, 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 to make me better. Mama went to so and so and and mind you she only do the ignorance, but she went to the old bear man and he gave us something to make me drink. Okay, so what? God made an exception for Mama? Mama was an old bear waker. Don't come with that. Don't don't see listen, don't make no excuse. Listen, I love Mama just like how you love Mama. But according to what my God put in here as his policies your ma, your Grammy, your gr anyone who subscribed to that were committing abomination. But that ain't the bad part, you know. No, no, no. That ain't the, the bad part is as a result of them inviting the spirits for whatever reason, it has now incarcerated the seed of them for generations. Thus, we have generational curses. So the, the, the cancer that has eaten up everyone in your family, it ain't happening because it could happen. This ain't some freak of nature. No. They were initially instituted through these agreements that were made through demonic altars via witchcraft. And as a result of it, when that spirit came into that bloodline, nobody understood it. So that spirit now begins to walk through generation to generation. You see a history of prostate cancer, a history of liver cancer, a history of breast cancer. When you these things aren't happening because they could happen, no. There's a spiritual order. There was a spiritual... They didn't know that when they were doing it. All they thought about, I just want to do this for my little grandchild, you know. I'll repent to God with it later. Yeah, you can repent to God with it later. Sweetie, you making a, a, a covenant? You're seeking the 
powers of dark. Christian, you all need to get it together, you know. How you all call yourself Christian around? You're putting hand on people talking mess with you all, praying for me, and you deep down in the obey man house. And, and look, you all need to get it together, you know. And that's, let me tell you something, man. I, I tell the radio lab, well, you better pray for a spirit of discernment. You better pray and, and listen, take your spirit of discernment serious. Then the Holy Spirit telling you, stay from around this fellow. Stay from around this woman around here, wearing all this red on herself, talking about she, the Lord speak. I watch, I watch, I watch a Bahamian preacher uh, the other day. I couldn't believe my eyes. Neither of my ears. Fuck, I almost pull off my ears. I watch this Bahamian preacher claiming to be casting out devils, right? Having a conversation as usual with these demon spirits. Such psychos. And apparently the person who they was in front of them, uh, they were talking to the, the spirit that possessed them. And they were saying how someone with witchcraft. So listen what this Bahamian preacher did now. The Bahamian preacher summons the spirit of the one who worked witchcraft on this person who they're talking to in, the, in front of them and made the spirit of that human be Lord, what, isn't that divination? So the whole church jumping up, oh, everybody falling out in the power. I say, you see, this is what, this is what ignorance does right here. Nobody is lining up this person is, this person is doing with what the rules say. I just read in Deuteronomy 18 from verse 9 to verse 14 that you should, it is an abomination to them be involved in divination. It is an abomination to deal with enchantments, with charmers, with observers of time, with familiar spirits. It is an abomination to do that. But the preacher understands that these people are ignorant. They don't read their Bible. They ain't into no laws and no rules. We can't be running over it. Whatever I tell them. Once I tell them I'm a Christian and I'm a prophet, I'm an apostle or super duper prophet times 10, once I tell them that, they're going to fall for that. So once I get them on them, I could tell them anything after that because I know they ain't going to their Bible like nothing. No, 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 I couldn't believe it. Then I saw the same preacher. I watched the video. In fact, I saved it on my iPhone. The preacher summons the, 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 this, this person had died. And the preacher summons this person Spirit to them. Boy, listen, Lord. I can't. I, I almost pass out. I couldn't. I just read. It is an abomination to be involved in necromancy. Why is the quote unquote preacher of God on the pulpit leading masses to defy the policies of God? Simple, Kevin. Because the people don't want to read. The people don't want to study the word. The people want a quick fix. The people want the pastor, the preacher, the apostle, just put down on them. In the name of Jesus, karate chop them in the neck and kick them to the floor and tell them, hey, you'll find a money when you reach home and need your bed. No, man. And we, we got to get angry. We have to get angry. We, how could you defy the laws of God? You, you, you should be angry. And everybody just, just, but I understand. Go back to the scripture again. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. The Bible says many, many go find their way there. Narrow is the gate. Small is the path that leads to light and righteousness. And very few can be on that road. So no, I ain't following no crowd. I'm following the crowd that subscribes to the rules, the policies of God. If you're on that crowd, if that crowd ain't on that run, I'll lie on your run, buddy. I, you you can go to hell by yourself. You won't, you won't dragging me with you. I show it to me. That's all I say. Show it to me in the Bible. Yeah, mama used to do it, but then show me where mama get it from in the Bible. Then mama get my full attention on you. But until you could do that, don't tell me that mama do this all her life. Yeah, that's why mama where she is, and y'all on the way to join her. No. Give me the word of God. What does God word say? Now, so, so far we realize that the system of witchcraft could be programmed by witches and warlocks, okay? True incantation, true evil sacrifice. But how is all of this done? All of this is done through what they call altars, all right? Altars are places, and I've said this to you on many occasions, where spirits 
meet with humanity, where human beings meet with invisible beings. Altars are a place where sacrifices are made. Altars are a place primarily where destinies are changed. Oh yeah, where you could change the original destiny of a human being. A man or a woman was born to be a lawyer, a doctor, a preacher, or whatever. But mama or grumpy or whoever in their ignorance decide to go to these witchcraft people for whatever reason, having no idea that the long-term implication is that it's going to alter the destiny of their children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, according to the scriptures, at minimum to the fourth generation. So that child who was destined for greatness has been marked spiritually based on the ignorance of a family member to involve themselves in these abominable acts. And when they made, when they went to the altar, for what, again, for whatever reason, they, they went there to the altar because now they, they, they don't want Kevin to prosper on his job. They don't want Kevin to be promoted. They want Kevin to lose his home. They don't want Kevin marriage to work. So what do we do? Let's go to a practitioner of the same of witchcraft. And you know what they're going to say? Okay, what do you have that belongs to Kevin, something personal. Do you have his fingernail clipping? Do you have his hair? Do you have a picture of him? Do you have some used clothing on the way we need that? Why? Because spirits are not omnipresent, then when we bring this item that belongs to Kevin to this altar, when we program the system to attack him, they need something to identify him. Oh, we're going deep today. So guess what? They couldn't do nothing of Kevin. So you know what you had to do now? You all remember back in the day? Oh, I hear he walk on it and his legs swell up. I hear, she, I hear they put it down for her, but the chicken walk on it. See, that's when they couldn't get nothing poisonous. So they had to put whatever concoction they devised in the spiritual realm to that evil altar and put it in the path, hoping that there would be some contact. So what does this now tell us? In order for these things to work, there has to be A, the covenant that was made at the altar, and B, we need to have this set up in such a way that it could now be connected to this poison. We couldn't get his picture. We couldn't get his nothing poison of it. So let's rest this down in his chair. Let's put it in his food. No, man. We exposing this devil today. We exposing this devil today. And I know many of you out there who don't believe in this. Well, then go lay down. Turn off the radio. You got to listen. Let's people with sense stay on. Who will go for it in life? Who will break the cords of wickedness that has had them held down for years by their own family members? But they won't co-workers, but they won't church members. That's why they can't prosper. So he said, let's put this down. Let's make this happen. So altars now, altars are the place where the destinies were changed. So you who are destined to be great, you who are destined to be the president, you were destined to be the CEO of that company. It can't happen no more because someone went to the altars of sorcery and reprogrammed your destiny. But you don't know this because there ain't nobody teaching you this. How you gonna know this? You don't know none of this. So you go play Mickey Mouse Church every Sunday. You play Mickey Mouse Convention every year. You do the same thing every year. This year is where the kingdom citizens rule. That's what they tell you. They put up a big banner. This is the year we recover all. This is the uh, whatever zone. Look here. Get from out here. <laughs> Teach me the principle. Let's, let's take me to that zone. Teach me the principle. In order for the kingdom citizens to reign and to come, recover all, they, they need to be guided by the laws. They need to know the principles. Your, your fancy little riddles and rhymes can't help us. Okay, you picking up pieces that will always result in prosperity cannot help us. We need to know the rules. We need to know the laws. That's how it operates. So altars. Altars now becomes the place in which spirits are called up. Spirits of God and the spirits of the enemy. Now, let's go to Exodus chapter 20. And verse 24, and we're going to see one of the principles of an altar, because the altar now is the centerpiece of everything as it relates to inviting spirits. This is how spirits are invited to operate legally in this way, because remember what I started off with. We have the dominion. They have not. I don't care how powerful spirits may be. I don't care how great on the hierarchy they are. They are limited as it relates to this earth unless a human being 
agree with them to invite them here to do their bidding. All right, so let's go to Exodus, and let's go to chapter 20, and we're going to read verse 24. And listen to what God says in verse 24 to the children of Israel through Moses. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice is key. See, there can be, even though we have the altar, without the sacrifice, then the agreement is not sealed. So a sacrifice seals whatever agreement was made at that altar. So an altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen, in all places where I record my name. Listen now, this is God. God says, I will now come unto thee. When you make up an altar, and that altar is dedicated to God, God says, now I will come unto thee. I will come there. I'm a spirit. I'm going to show up. You're going to see me, but I dare. And he says, I come in empty handed. He says, I will bless thee. Because this is a principle of the altars, plural. This worked for good and evil. This worked on both sides of the spectrum. So an evil altar will give you the, give you the opposite result. And this is where the practitioners of that altar don't realize that even though Kevin come in here seeking a solution from the kingdom of darkness and the practitioners summoning the spirit, what they don't know is that the spirit behind that altar has no commitment to Kevin nor the practitioner. And that it's bringing curses that will be levied to the practitioner and Kevin and their seed. You don't got to believe me? Look at someone in your, your community who you know used to do foolishness or you hear used to work or be a love guy the children. You want to see the evidence? Look at the children. Look at them. Look at the backwardness. Look at the defeat. Look at the early death. Look at the, the, the going on drugs. Look, these are the invisible curses that the demonic kingdom never told them about. All they wanted was the agreement of that human to have the legal right. These are all of this fine print that they never read. But now it's running its course in the lives of these people. So two things we're learning here as it relates to altars. Number one, depending on who or what is raising the altar unto which spirit. If it's the spirit of God, then God says, I'm going to visit. I'm the spirit behind this altar. And I'm going to be bringing blessings with me. If it's an altar for demonic purposes to program the system of witchcraft, then he says, listen, Curses with demon forces are coming behind it. So every altar, hear me clearly, according to the scriptures, there is a spirit behind the altar. Now you might have rolled up in the back of the bush and your daddy farm back there on the island. You know, this why daddy got all these rocks piled up here. Or Grammy always coming in the back here like she praying. She ain't praying nothing. She ain't praying. With all these candles and things and these incense burning. And all. What, what, what? And, and why she can't invite other sisters and brothers from the church to come pray to this altar there? No, because it's not an altar of God. It's not. And she's not communing or consulting with the spirits. See, you all need to know these things. You need to know. My people perish because of a lack of knowledge. And God has given me the word, to, the revelation to give to his people. And I ain't going to let my children suffer because I decided to keep my mother or let somebody try to intimidate me. It ain't going to happen. I am going to reveal it. I'm going to give it to you straight. We ain't cutting no corners here. So there's a spirit behind every altar. All right? And that altar will always, for the most part, need a blood sacrifice. Why? Because, oh, this is the mystery now. This, 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 this can get hot now. Before we get there, let's, let's go to Genesis chapter 4. Let's go to Genesis now. We can deal with the blood now as it relates to the sacrifice. Let's go to Genesis chapter 4. And let's read from verse 8. Okay? Genesis chapter 4. I'm going to read from verse 8. Listen to what it says. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass. Now at this point, let me just give you some background. Remember, both of them brought an offering unto God. as a sacrifice to God. And it says that... Uh, uh, both of them, uh, sorry, Cain, who killed Abel. Abel brought the sacrifice. He took the first of everything that he produced in terms of farming or whatever, and he gave it to God. He gave God his best. But Cain picked up something and said, yeah, man, God did this. So the Bible says God rejected or despised uh, Cain's offering or sacrifice, and he accepted Abel, his brother's own. So Cain get mad. So God said, no reason to get mad. If you bring something decent to me, then you will get the same praise as your brother will get. That's, that's simple. Now, we're going to pick it up in verse 8 now of Genesis 4. 
It says, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. He killed him. Okay, all right, fine. Let's go to verse 9 of Genesis 4. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Listen to verse 10, because that's what I really want us to look at. Because we're dealing with the blood now. Verse 10 of Genesis 4 says, remember now, let's get this straight. Cain is the one who killed his brother Abel. So at this point, Abel is dead. He don't exist on this earth no more. His spirit done move on to the spiritual world, and his body is now in the decaying process to go back to the dust. Let's make that clear. But verse 10 is telling us something different. Verse 10 of Genesis 4 says, And he said, Who's he? God. God says, What hast thou done? Listen carefully. God says, For the voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from where? The ground. Now, from what I read, from what I read, from what I read, Abel is a dead man. But the blood, his blood is now speaking. Is now speaking to God from the ground. Let's make more sense of this, man, because it sounds like some of y'all don't believe this. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 17. See, this deep teaching, man, we're getting deep today. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11. Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11. So we can get more policies as it relates to the blood, more principles as it relates to the blood. So we just read just now that even though Abel is a dead man, and his blood spilled to the ground. God said to Cain, boy, what did you do? For your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Even though he is physically dead, there's still life in the blood. Leviticus 17 verse 11. What does it say? For the life of the flesh is in the who? The blood. Listen. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the who? altar to make an atonement for your souls for it is the blood that make it an atonement for the soul so you see here blood ain't just blood in the spiritual realm oh no oh no in the spiritual world even though abel was dead his blood still was crying out in the spiritual world according to this biblical law rule principle and policies according to leviticus 17 and 11 it says for the life of the flesh is in where? In the blood. So now brings us back to the sacrifice. When they decide to put your pictures and your photos and work in the nasty obey and voodoo and cutting open chickens and goats and pouring the blood of that animal on that picture, all of a sudden your boy who was sensible, your boy who was destined for greatness, but they got a hold of his picture, they got a hold of something to him and when they of that animal spiritually has now been transferred to that young man and all of a sudden that boy doing everything stupid he never behaved that way before all of a sudden he walking the road making monkey capers doing foolishness flipping back and forward cursing out everybody the spirit of anger on him the spirit of instability the boy ain't the boy no more because they changed the boy destiny on the altar through the blood of that evil sacrifice but they tell you that the boy was laced. Yeah? How, how did they lace him? They didn't tell you that piece, though. They didn't tell you lacing is also sorcery. They didn't tell you that. Why didn't they tell you these things? Why? So the life of the flesh is in the blood. Why? Because when they make that evil sacrifice at that evil altar, this is witchcraft now, this is the system now, where they're inviting the spirit to blood sacrifice, and your boy picture, your daughter picture, the picture of you and your wife, your husband, whatever, they now begin to make the sacrifice on those pictures to now assign spirits, giving that spirit or those spirits the spirit of divorce, the spirit where a man don't want his wife no more, where a woman don't want him no more. The spirit of division and discord. Nobody's teaching you this. All of a sudden, this woman has no more desire for her husband. All of a sudden, this man find everybody sexy and attractive except his wife who God gave him, who he will tell from day one, this is the one God gave him. 
but he find no more pleasure you know? not knowing that someone programmed the system they made sacrifice to devils to do their bidding Kevin okay you running out now you talking nonsense now you better give us a scripture oh I have no problem with that you know me I just scripture mine so let's go to first Corinthians yeah take that let's go to first Corinthians chapter 10 so I love bring the biblical proof, man, because I, I want you to know I'm making this stuff up. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to read from verse 20 to verse 22. Remember now, this, we, we, they, we, they are, remember, who have the dominion in this earth? Mankind. So if mankind want God to do something for them, or the devil, then they have to follow the protocol to invite them. Yeah. So back in the Old Testament, before the, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, Listen, uh, not Aaron, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of them serve altars, but they serve the altars of God. But on the flip side, such as the, uh, the, the evil guys, they, such as the Egyptians and so on, they, they, they serve idols that would, would, would to invoke excuse me, evil spirits. But they had to do a blood sacrifice on that altar. And the sacrifice they were making to demons. They say, here, demons, we want to appease you so you could oppress Tom. So you this, we call it on a specific spirit here now. So this is what is required through this enchantment. But a sacrifice of blood must be made. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And like I said, we're going to read from verse 10 to verse 20. So from verse 20 of 1 Corinthians 10 to verse 22. Verse 20 says... But I say, now this is Paul, the Apostle Paul, speaking to the church of Corinth. And he's telling them these things because some of them right there in the church, just like today, waking or bear to the ten power. Don't mind them in there. God said you will know them by their fruit. Every Sunday you in the spirit. Every Sunday they got to throw but 60 towels on you and cover you up because you under this power of God. Only for you to jump over it and see how you can't stand Kevin. How you hate Mary. Pastor preached too long. What, what spirit you was under? It wasn't the spirit of God. Now you were under spirit. But I can guarantee it wasn't the spirit of God. He says, but I say that the things, listen now, which the Gentiles sacrifice. When they took your pictures, when they took your underwear, when they took, when they went in your, your, your clothes like 3 o'clock in the morning, steal your stuff and carry down them people. It says, now when they made the sacrifice, those Gentiles, they sacrificed to who? To devils. That's what I'm reading. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 10, 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. If you know they doing fool, you know they into sorcery, the apostle Paul is admonishing us, do not have no dealings with them. There are many pastors on this island, I even go to the Grand Bahama, on this island, all right, who are spiritually blind and have people in their leadership team who they have no knowledge of. Neck deep in waking wickedness. And this is why the church can't go forward. This is why everybody life is on a standstill. This is why everyone broke, busted, disgusted, cannot be trusted. Because they're ignoring the spiritual rules. Listen to verse 21. Let's read verse 20 again. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Verse 21. He says, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord. Don't go up there taking communion. Don't go up there eating bread, which is the flesh of Christ symbolically. Don't go up there drinking the wine, which is his blood symbolically. He say, don't do it. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Grammy, pastor, elder, when that leg of yours, what the doctor couldn't diagnose, he couldn't fix it, and some members say, come go down here in the back of the bush by this woman who could heal you. Was that woman a child of God? Was that woman an elder? Was that woman a, a part of the body of Christ 
who confess Jesus Christ as Lord and whatever it is that she's recommending to you or fixing for you, did Jesus and his Holy Spirit advise her to do it? No, and you knew it. But you end there anyway. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. He says, no. In so much words, you cannot serve two masters. Listen, verse 22. Do you provoke the Lord to jealousy? You, you all hearing this? Are you all hearing this? Now, let's, let's go to another scripture before I get to the one that I really want to go to. Let's go to Exodus. Let's go to the, 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 the 20th chapter. And we're going to read from verse 2 to verse 5. And this has to do with those who deal with these same sorcery and idolatry. See, idolatry. Idolatry, enchantment, wizards, warlocks, witches, witchcraft, divination, uh, wise men, uh, sorcery. All of this, all of these are the tentacle of the system of sorcery. So this is what I say to you. When a pastor say to you, don't believe in those things. You know what he's saying? You don't believe in the Bible. You hear me read nothing from Shakespeare today, right? You hear me read nothing from Einstein today. Everything that I read to you, I read to you from the scriptures. So you need to take note of these people who are lording over you as your leader. And they are leading you to a, well, I wouldn't say a Christless hell, but they, you wouldn't enjoy the quality of your life here. Not if you stay under that nonsense. Exodus chapter 20, beginning at verse 2. Now remember, we, we just ended now in First uh, Corinthians chapter 10, verse 22, and it says, Do not provoke the Lord to jealousy. So in Exodus chapter 20, verse 2 says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Why are you wearing these amulets? Why are you wearing these charm? Well, Kevin, the woman said, I must put this on and ain't no evil could come after me. What you, who, who woman? Who this woman is? Well, Kevin, you know, well, he, he, he's a Christian. And how do you determine that? Because when I went there, he, he full up this cup of water, and he started reading the Psalms over me. And he, he, he what? Mm -mm. Obviously, you don't know the law. Obviously, you don't know the law. But let's go back here, verse 4 of Exodus 20. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, Christian. Christian, stop it. Stop doing it. I told a story one time, this lady begging me to come. Kevin, something in my house. Kevin, please come pray. I believe you as a man of God. I listen to these things you be teaching, but only you preaching these things. Lord, please, in the name of Jesus, come pray. I decided to go. After much badgering, I didn't feel led. But I said, you know what? Let me go to get off my back. I walk inside the house radio line. And as soon as I close the woman's door, I look back. And in the corner behind the door, the woman have this ammonia bottle. Half full of ammonia and the rest of it full with, 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 with mud balls. So I say, woman, if you don't get me out of this, this, this devil pit, you see this the problem right here. And, 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 and I don't truly blame you because I understand you working out of ignorance because you couldn't be in your right mind calling the man of God to come pray for your house and you got to be a pack up in the corner of your house. Woman, what you got here is of the kingdom of darkness. Could you please show Mr. Kevin L.A. Ewing where in the scripture that Hezekiah, where in Scripture that Jeremiah, where in the scripture that Hosea or Nahum or Obadiah or Luke or Mark or John or even Jesus had ammonia and, 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 and mud balls in a bottle to keep spirits of this house. Show it to me. But, but, but brother Kevin, I, my other sisters in the church, I don't care. All of us all be awake if they're doing it. And that's why none of y'all can get ahead. I just read to you in the book of 1 Corinthians 10. He says, you can't sit at the table of the Lord. And also consume a devil. See, it can't happen. Serve which this day. Pick whom you can serve. But don't call me up in here with these things up in here. Nothing I can do for you. Because the devil and the demonic forces have a legal right to harass you. Have a legal right to give you sleep paralysis and hide you. Because you have their paraphernalia. Don't come with that. 
What you doing with this? Who, who advised you? Well, Kevin, the sisters do it, and they say it's work for them. So God knows what are you going to church for then? What are you going to church for if you got devil things up in here? But you all better stop. <laughs> Take care. Listen, these see people. Boy, listen, the more and more I read my Bible, the more and more, not only do I fall in love with it, the more and more it makes sense to me. That's why the Bible says, you know, the Bible says, on that day, my son, many are going to cry, Lord, Lord, many. And they can say, Lord, haven't I done miracles in your name? And I do them. God say, you, you wouldn't mind anybody never know you. Your giftings, your titles, never in scripture says it's a precursor or a qualifier for the kingdom of God. I never read that. In fact, what I did read, it says that the gifts of God are without repentance. You don't got to be safe to operate in the gifts God gives you before the foundation of the world. But if you ain't secure your soul and do away with the abominations of the Lord, then you will find yourself in a Christless hell and wonder how you get there. So I tell her, I say, woman, let me do something, yeah? I don't come to obey people's house to pray for them. I'm sorry, okay? What you got here, and I'm sure there are other things that you're doing. I'm sure, I'm sure you're mopping your floor with tape and time. I'm sure that. I'm sure you're putting salt in four corners of the, of the, of the house and around the, the borders of your home, your gate and your fence and your wall. I'm sure you're doing that because if you got this here, okay, I'm sure you. Well, that, that's true, Mr. Young, but I didn't see nothing wrong with it. Well, what do you mean you, you called me here because the Spirit holding you down every night and beating you to death? That's what you, you called me to pray it out. So these things are the reason why they're there. See, listen, when you set up that altar, because that's what they are. When you, you, you are in the very thing that those practitioners of that altar gave you and tell you, say, put this in your house and no matter what they send at you, it can't work. The very thing that they telling you ain't going work, inviting specific spirits there. So in the spiritual realm, you're on the highway of the spiritual realm, your place is a gas station. That's the place they come to fuel. That's the place they come to hang out right there. That's the place they come to refresh. Because you have everything there to facilitate that they have the they never had the legal right before to inhabit your place, but now they have it. Because you have stuff in there through your ignorance. And I always add this. If what you're saying to me is true, if you're saying to me, Kevin, this here is to keep the evil spirits. Well, why you never discuss why when they had testimony night, right after Sister Mary say she thanked the Lord for pulling out the miry clay and putting on the rock to stay. Why didn't you get up next and say, I want to thank the Lord, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus, that I have ammonia and mud balls in my corner, Jesus, Lord of mercy, and I mop my floor with type, ain't no devil, why haven't you went up there on the pulpit and give that testimony? So you know what I tell me? You know, you know that is wrong. You know that is not of God. So stop playing with your soul. Stop playing Mickey Mouse Church. No. Get real. Don't call me in your mess. Don't call me. And that's probably why. And I know that's why the Spirit was telling me don't go to begin with. But I, I'm glad I did go to see the mess you got there. And this is the reason why you and all the children oppress. Every last one of them oppress. Not realizing that the altar she brought in her place, these, these points of contact has now ensured that those children are spiritually not only enslaved, but it has changed the course of their destiny. So you can go church all you, you can go church all you want. You can go to Bishop T D Jakes, uh, uh, whatever he does have. Woman Dawad loose. In fact, you can go to Billy Goat Dawad loose. Ain't gonna cheat. The only loosing them up in there is when they free you up of that money. But that's about it. You will go to the same and the same way. Why? Because there are spiritual injunctions against your destiny, and that has been brought about through your ignorance. But I don't fully blame you. I blame those who claim to lead you. That's who I blame. Because they are the ones that are supposed to be telling you what I'm telling you right now. So now that you, you could now fight sensibly and wisely. You could say, you know what? Kevin, just, they just, I just finished hearing that man preach on that the other day. Or teach on that. Boy, look, yeah, I messing with that. Don't I going to know, know which woman? I don't need to know nothing about my future. Because the man just quoted the story. So he, I could give you the scripture right now because I remember because I couldn't forget that. See, if they're not telling you that, if the only thing you could remember when you leave of that service is a nursery rhyme they give you, boy, look here, if you know what's good for you and your seed, you better run for your life. So, the sacrifice that is made against you, it is changing your destiny. 
it is altering the original course that God has called you to be on. And this is why people not no coming to fight you face to face. No way. All of that is over with. Nobody is going to come and curse you the F word. People who do that now, that's old school. They come at you in the spiritual realm. They're coming to fight you in the spiritual world. Why? Because they're coming with altars supporting them and backing them because there's always a spirit behind the altar. Let me give you some more proof, man, because you only look at your altar yesterday. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and we're going to read from verse 5 to verse 7. All right? 2 Chronicles, sorry. 2 Chronicles chapter 1, and we're going to read from verse 5 to verse 7. Now, this was during uh, Solomon had now just become the new king of Israel. He had uh, uh, taken over from his father, David. And this is basically his inauguration. So in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, beginning at verse 5, it says, Moreover, moreover, the brazen altar, circular word altar, that Bezaleel, whatever his name is, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord, and Solomon and the congregation sought unto it. What is this it? The altar. Verse 6 of 2 Chronicles 1 says, And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord. So now we realize that this is an altar that has been erected for godly purposes. And remember the principle that we read in Exodus 20 verse 24, that wherever an altar is constructed unto God, God says not only will he come there, you will see him, he comes, he's a spirit, and he will bring with him blessing. In verse 6 of 2 Chronicles chapter 1, it says, And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. Now, this was a very huge sacrifice, all right? It says, As a result of this, in that night did God appear unto Solomon, and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And that night, meaning that this was a dream now, God appeared to Solomon in a dream. So the altars, and this, and we can deal with this more. This, this is just part one of the mystery of witchcraft. We got like about two or three more series that I can do with you. So you can get a full understanding of this. But what the scripture is showing you now, this is how sleep paralysis come about. Many of you out there who have been high in the night, or you feel this heavy thing on your chest, or pinning you down to the bed. You can't scream, you can't shout. Your spouse or whoever next to you, and they don't know what's happening with you, and you feel like something trying to kill you. Well, that came as a result. There's an altar. Whenever you see that happening to you, there's someone in your family, if not yourself, or in your ancestral bloodline, who served altars. And the spirits from that altar are now coming to torment the family members of, of who, who, who the person who originally served that altar. They invited spirits. Now, whether they invited to attack someone else or to harass, it doesn't matter. Those spirits are now assigned to that bloodline. So there are members in that family who are going to have a lot of demonic attacks. A lot of uh, strange happiness is going to take place in their lives that they can't tell people because they ain't gonna, it, it's not like they're losing their head. But they're telling you the truth. Now, you see in the godly side of it in Solomon's case, Solomon made this big, huge sacrifice before God. So the spirit of God from that altar is now visiting Solomon. All throughout the Bible, you will see the same principle. So if the Spirit of God is now visiting Solomon as a result of the sacrifice, what do you think about sacrifices that are made to demonic, uh, to devils and demons? So this is why the children of that family is harassed, especially as babies. They're screaming and crying in the night like something trying to kill them. You got to go in there and they, that child's scared when the light go off. Why? Because the altars that the mummy, the daddy, the grammy, or the great, great grammy, the altars are now visiting, sorry, the spirits from the altars are now visiting those children and harassing them. So what am I saying to you? Well, I've been telling you earlier, there are, there are spirits behind the altars. Don't mind just a bunch of rocks there. Don't mind that big tree there that you see mama or grandpa. He just go there every evening and talk to the tree. They ain't talking about their head. They are communing with the spirit. They are consulting with the... They know what's buried under that banana tree. They know what's buried under that... 
tree, they know that they're under that big fig tree with all those roots or under that tamar tree. They are fully aware. They'll never tell you. But they are fully aware, but still. All right? So, I want to show you how real this is as it relates to the spirits behind the altar. So, let's go to, to 1 Kings. And I realize the time slipping here. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 13. And this, this, this is a very broad topic that we're going to cover. But I'm going to pound this into your understanding because I need you. I need you to break the spirit of ignorance that you've been under for so many years. And I promise you, once you begin to put these principles in, in place, in terms of when you pray now, you pray against the altars. If you're being high, if you're not going to get it, getting ahead, come against the altars and the covenants and the blood sacrifice or the sacrifices made. Father, every evil altar speaking against my destiny. I silence the blood, I silence the voice of the blood of that altar speaking against me. I just showed you the principle in, in, in Genesis 4. God says, when he came to Cain, he says, what have you done? For the blood of your brother is speaking from the ground. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. The Bible says in first, uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 10, we get at verse uh, 20, it says that when the Gentiles make their sacrifices, they're making it unto devils, and that I would have you have no dealing with devils. See, these people have no idea when they go into the graveyard all hours of the night doing nonsense and doing rituals and, and, and letting the spirits take. They have no idea how they are rewriting the history of their family to an evil future. They have no idea of that. And that's why there's people suffering today. They can watch success go by. They can, watch, they can never participate in those things because mommy all her life, grammy, grandpa all their life, touting titles they were rich and warlocks and, and, and secret society leaders, yeah, at the expense of the future generation because I gave you the principle in Exodus chapter 20 verses 2 to 5. God pleaded with Israel. He says, listen, do not bow. Do not serve. Do not have no dealings with idolatry. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 20, 1 Corinthians 10, verses 14, he says, flee idolatry. Not adultery. He ain't talking about that. Idolatry to serve other gods, to participate in necromancy, witchcraft, obey, voodoo, shangoa, uh, santeria, black magic, uh, taroka, all of these things are the paraphernalia, the tentacles of sorcery that has tied. I don't care how educated you are. If you had a family member that participated in these acts, then the portal of sorcery has been opened in your bloodline. And at some point in your life, things are going to go downhill and it's going to be almost impossible for you to regain the losses you've had. Why? Because there is a voice from that altar that is speaking against your destiny. Uh, you could get saved to the 10 power. They could anoint you bishop of the whatever, whatever, to the 30 billion, whatever. It don't matter. There is a covenant. There is a voice speaking against your... There is an injunction in the realm of the spirit that lies your blessings. Now you are enshrouded, overcome, and saturated with the curses that came along with the covenants that was made by your ancestors. Don't tell me no mess. I will hear it. I don't want to hear none of it. So when you see, when you see them out there speaking to the rock, when you see them saying they're going in the back here by the field, they ain't going to plant nothing. You follow them. You follow them. Watch them making circle in the sand and got candles around them and reading from this book. I ain't going to tell you the book name. But they call in, they, they, they are consulting with spirits. They will know who's trying to fix them. They will know what's going to happen in the future. But who? They're not consulting with God. And let me make this clear, because I don't want you all to get confused. I ain't talking about your regular OB. I'm talking about the pastor. I'm talking about the leader of the church. I'm telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. And that's why you need to ask God for discernment under these particular leaders. you got people who have no more spiritual scruples. Anything to do with power, they are into at your expense. Come now, Kevin. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 13. 
They should be rapping. How much more time they got here? All right. They can make this quick because we're going a little deeper now. All right. So I put on my second oxygen tank because they could get real uh, serious here. It will get serious. Let's go to First Kings chapter 13. All right. And we're going to begin at verse 1. And now this scripture is going to reveal to us that there's a spirit behind every altar. All right. So in 1 Kings chapter 13, beginning at verse 1, it says, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam, who was the king of Israel, stood by the who? Altar to do what? Burn incense. Now Jeroboam, let me give you some background, is a wicked king. He is an, he's an idol worshiper. Everything God called abominable, according to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 to 14, this guy was leading the pack in it. He serves evil altars. He involved in necromancy, familiar spirit, witches, warlock. He was the leader. And Israel was under serious oppression and curses because their leader was into wickedness. So the Bible says, God sent a prophet from Judah to speak a word unto Jeroboam. Now, but when he got there, Jeroboam, the king of Israel, was at his evil altar, burning incense, servicing that altar, consulting with the spirit behind that altar. But watch what happened in verse 2. Because if you was back then, you would say the man of God got to be out of his mind. Because guess what? The man of God is not speaking to the altar. Which in, if today, it, it was a bunch of stones piled, a bunch of rocks. So verse 2 of First Kings chapter 13, it says, And he cried against the altar. Who's he? This is the prophet whom God sent from Judah to speak a word. So he now cried. He's speaking to these bunch of rocks. But he know in the realm of the spirit, ain't a bunch of rocks. There's a bunch of rocks there physically. But he know there's a spirit behind this altar, and it's an evil one. He said in verse 2, And he, which is the prophet, cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus said the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and unto thee shall he offer the priest of the high places. Let's get this straight now. This priest is not a priest of the living God. This priest is a voodoo priest, a witchcraft priest that serves the evil altars of Jeroboam. So the prophet is now prophesying the future events God has had with Israel and serving and doing these abominable acts. So he says, let's listen carefully. And he cried again against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, oh, so he's talking not to Jeroboam. Even though Jeroboam is standing up at the altar, he is speaking to the altar, but the spirit behind that altar. So in the spiritual realm, he is talking to that chief devil, that demon, or those demons that they were making sacrifice. So he said, O altar, altar, thus said the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee, or upon this altar, shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense unto thee, and men born shall be burnt upon thee. And he, which is the man of God, gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord had spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, or torn, or broken, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. Listen to verse 4. And it came to pass when the king Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, because he's upset now, who does do think he is to come up in my place and speak to my altar in such a manner? So it says here, and it came to pass when the king Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he, which is Jeroboam, put forth his hand from the altar, saying, lay hold of him. So the king is now telling his guards, grab him. Listen to this now. Lay hold of him and his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up. So that he could not pull it back again. So when the king put forth his hand to tell his guards or the evil spirits to grab a hold of the man of God, it says that his hand withered and he couldn't pull it back down. Verse 5 says, The altar also was, was broken or rent and the ashes poured out 
from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given to the boy. And of course, the, man, the Jeroboam began to beg the man of God to please restore his hand. But I'm bringing you the scripture to show you how real this is. See, we're moving from all of this secular teaching. We're moving from all of this, this physical stuff we hear every Sunday. And we really, really now putting our focus on Ephesians 6 and verse 12, which says we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. And the scripture is making this clear. The man of God spoke to the spirit behind the altar. But this ain't nothing new. No. Even in the New Testament. Remember I told you last week when we was dealing with omens. And I told you about it is a common behavior. In fact, it's a Caribbean practice. That when a child is born, it is customary for the mother or whomever to secure the placenta or the umbilical cord so that it can be buried in the, under a tree behind the yard in most cases. And the idea behind it, which is demonic, is to protect the child from spirits or harm or whatever, which is garbage. All you're doing is changing the destiny of that child and the altar, wherever that child umbilical cord is buried, the altar now controls the destiny of that child. I just told you about the blood, right? Doesn't the umbilical cord have blood all over it, all in it? So what happens now? The blood from that umbilical cord now is appeasing the spirits at that altar. And the altar now controls the destiny of the child. It is inevitable for the child to fail at a certain point in their life. The child may start off good, may start off getting good grades, doing well, but guess what? The time that was set on that child's destiny to be turned, it could be 50, 20, 25, 30, 25, 40, but that day coming because it's already marked the spirit. And everything that can go wrong for that person, that child will begin to go wrong. Because now the altar is speaking against their destiny. And there is an item belonging to the child that gives them the right to do it. Now, let's go. I see this time slipping, but I'm just getting deep here. Let's go to, uh, let's go to a New Testament uh, scripture. Let's go to... Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And I can show you something that can blow your mind right now. Mark chapter 11. And we're going to read from verse 12 to verse 14. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. I'm trying to put it up here. Mark chapter 11. And we're going to read from verse 12 to verse 14. Now listen to this carefully now. Now, the scripture says here, now, let's start from verse 11. Verse 11 of Mark 11 says, And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all things, and now the evening was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. Verse 12 of Mark 11. And on the next day, when they were come from Bethany, he, who is he? which is Jesus, was what? Hungry. Verse 13. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily, he might find anything thereon. So he was hoping that figs would have been on this fig tree because it had all the leaves that gave the impression that it was supposed to be, uh, I guess, given uh, figs. It says, and when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. Now, this is Jesus. For the time of figs was not yet, but listen to verse 14 and listen to the revelation. And Jesus answered, circle that word, circle the word answered, because, and I know English scholar, I believe I got on BJC in English somewhere, but listen to this. It says, and Jesus answered, but he's talking to the fig tree. And if, 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 if the, the dictionary serves me correctly, the word answer means to give a response either verbally or written to an answer, to a question. So the Bible says, and Jesus answered the fig tree. What question the fig tree asks? But why am I putting this out to you? It is to support what I was telling you all along. Clearly, this fig tree was an altar. Clearly, something was buried under this fig tree. And Jesus was speaking to the spirit behind the tree. Just like when you're ma, just like when you're Grammy, just like when you're no good grandpa who worked witchcraft all his life, stand up in the backyard and speak into that banana tree and speak into that papaya tree that you thought he was on his head. No, 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 no. He wasn't on his head. He was speaking 
to the spirit behind the tree that is controlling the destiny of everyone whose placenta is buried there. So the scripture says, and Jesus answered and said unto it, what is the it, the fig tree? He said unto it, no man eat fruit of thee thereafter forever. So this particular fruit tree will never, ever blossom. Never. It will never produce figs. Jesus not only dealt with the spirit, but the physical tree itself was cursed. Listen to verse 15. And they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple. Let's drop down to verse 16. And would not suffer that any man... I'm trying to find the part when they were coming back. Anyway, time slipping me, but you go read it. When they were coming back and the disciples were marvel. They say, my Lord, the fig tree dry up. Oh, Jesus, just like how you say. See, this is another example of what you got to do. Someone listening to me today, what I am saying to you is resonating exactly what I'm talking about. You know, you come from a Obeah family, you come from a witchcraft family, but your life tie up too. Don't believe because you in church, you escaping this. No, you were initiated into that witchcraft family when things were buried. As a result of that, you're, I don't care who you marry. I don't care who you date. You will be from man to man, woman to woman, whatever. Your relationships will never last as if you get married. That's if you get married. That's if you have children. Why? Because the altars are now determining how far you go in life. But the altars are controlling you from the spiritual world. Why? Because when great Grammy, Grammy, great, great, great Grammy made the covenants with the spirits at that altar, she in her ignorance, he in his ignorance, had no idea that they were activating the law of Exodus 20 verses 2 to 5, where God says, if you decide to serve altars, don't do it, for I'm a jealous God. But if you do it, know this, I will visit your iniquity, the evil that you're doing now, at minimum to the third and fourth generation. So what does that mean? Your children who aren't even, your great-grandchildren, sorry, who you probably will never meet. You will probably die before they're born. They are already marked for destruction before they even enter this according to the scriptures, according to the rules, according to the principles of God. But that in the part would hit me, you know, because it's in the Bible. The part would, why aren't the preachers preaching this? Why aren't they educating you spiritually for you to really now fight spiritually? Why? See, this is why I get angry. I'm sick of hearing the prosperity. What sense does it make being prosperous if you are held back? If you are living a life of... Ba what could riches do for you when you're so confused in life? What? You tell me. So what did God say to do? What did God say to do about these altars? Well, let's go to Deuteronomy. Because we wrapped up in a little bit. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. And this is only part one. This is only part one. Part two, part three. We might even go to part four of the mystery of witchcraft because I am sick and tired of hearing foolish Christians. That's all Kevin is talking about. You need to, they are foolish. They are under bewitchment. Anyone who tell you, after all of these scriptures, and this ain't even scratching the surface of what I got here for you. After all of these scriptures, you letting these fools tell you these things ain't real or these things only work if you believe it? Well, then you're just as crazy as them. So the scripture says here in Deuteronomy chapter 7, and let's read from verse 1. He says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land which thou goest to possess it and has cast out many nations. He's talking about the promised land. Before thee, the Hittites and the Gergesites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Parasites and the Hivites, the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, listen now, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou, listen carefully, listen carefully. Thou shalt make no covenants, that's what I'm reading. Thou shalt make no agreements, thou shalt make no leagues. Thou shalt have no form of agreements with them, period. He said, make no covenants with them or show mercy unto them. Verse 4, neither shall thou make marriages. Don't marry them. You hear they, you know they mind power is into secret society 
and they Grammy them, you hear that the, the mummy was deeply into sorcery and wearing all these charms. D tell your sons now, son, I know she pretty. Son, I know she well proportionate. Son, I know she will look good on your arm. But son, the repercussions that are going to come as a result of your allegiance to this relationship is going to be devastating. And a lot of people are doing it today. See, listen to me. Don't, if someone in your life right now, you contemplating marrying them, you all gung-ho, you don't talk about the horse and the carriage and the 900 people you're going to have in your bridal party, forget all of that. You know what I tell them? Take me to Long Island. Take me to Cat Island. Take me to Abaco. Wherever your people from, take me there. See, they ain't going to impress me. Let me see what they dealing with, and I know what you're all about, because every seed produced after its kind. The scripture says, Genesis chapter 1, 11 of verse 12, it says, every seed produced after its kind. So if you are an apple seed, I don't expect to see a mango fruit. So if your madam is into that, it's only a matter of time. If the spirit of the Lord don't come upon you and break that curse, it's only a matter of time before the same spirit that influenced her begin to influence you. Next thing you put in all kinds of things up, my food, my head ain't got no more. No, man, we, we real today. We are real. This is the Minister Kevin L.A. Ewing Spiritual Insight Show where I pull no punches. If you don't like it, pastors, preachers, Christian council leaders, turn your radio off. Okay? These are for those who want to be spiritually educated, who want to now grab a hold of their life and begin to move into what God has called them to do. It will not happen under that dead edifice you are at. It will not happen under that place they're cranking up that fast music and slow music, spinning around seven times, running your head into the pulpit and doing all of that, and then emptying your pockets and you're still in the same position you used to be in. No, 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 no. We're dealing with the spiritual laws. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with what the principles, what the rules, what the policy. God, I don't want to be broke no more. How do I break the spirit of poverty? How do I break the spirit of insanity? How do I break the spirit of backwardness? How much longer do I have to sit back and watch my children fail in life? How much times I got to beat my five-year-old for lying? But no one told me about a lying spirit. This little girl who I love, my daughter, and whomever, this promiscuous, how come nobody never told me about the spirit of love? How come nobody never directed me to Numbers chapter 5 that speaks about the spirit of jealousy? How come? Why aren't they teaching me these things? Why, after 30 years of being a Christian, I accidentally turned to Dove 103.7, listen to this crazy man talking about these spirits, and nobody never told me about this before? No, that's why the scripture is clear. I'm done right here. The scripture made it clear, Mr. Parson. That's what we're coming after. The leaders, you, you are the cause of the Christian nation, or this Christian uh, body in Grand Bahama. I ain't talking about the rest of the Bahamas because they got their own problems. This is why we can't go forward. Y'all playing church. Y'all playing Mickey Mouse at the expense of other people. The funeral home making all the money now because Christians are being buried before their time. They in church claim them to be victorious but failing on every level. Why? Because they're trying to fight without knowledge. So I will end with my favorite scripture. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 9b. And what does it say? Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Not through no money. God say, I see five people in here right now who got $3,000. Man, get your lion tail from off this thing. Everybody will hear you. Get you, demon. That's what you are. I rebuke you. Get out of here. You've been saying that every time you fly here to Grand Bahama, you bring your little dirty red cloth and these old dirty cow oil talking fool, but rub this on you. I ain't rubbing nothing. I suck of y'all. Why you can't give me the scripture? What is it that the scripture can't do that the oil could do? No. People got to get fed up. You are not fed up. So therefore, when you are not fed up, you have no desire to seek the knowledge I'm giving you now. And as a result of that, you will live a cycle of failure. And when you die, it doesn't end there. You know what happens? The cycle of failure as a baton will now be passed on to your children. Why? Because every seed produces after its kind. That'll be all for me this week. And I pray you have an enjoyable week as we return next week with part two of the mystery of witchcraft. Please visit my website, KevinLAUingMinistries.com, and I will be posting this on my YouTube channel this evening. But visit my uh, uh, website, and you will be able to get all of 
upcoming information and itineraries of my next speaking engagement. God bless you. You have a great week in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.